Visper, Hersuf, pack your things. Glifar yelled as he raced through the house, with his brother Arfadar, close behind. Honey, what's going on? Bisper asked as she ran out of the kitchen. Batalia and Chokan are dead and me and Arfadar are wanted for murder. Glifar replied. Get her Suf, we have to go now. He said calmly. Bisper ran upstairs, screaming her daughter's name as Glifar and Arfadar began grabbing food and water. Glifar and Arfadar were brothers who both worked in the military. Arfadar built weapons for the military and trained soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Glifar was captain of the ship The Odyssey in the Stravarian Navy. He was also an admiral and controlled an entire fleet. Hersuf came down the stairs in tears with two huge suitcases. Daddy, what's going on? she asked. Where are we going? she asked while crying. Hersuf, calm down and follow your uncle outside to put your things in the car. He answered her calmly while gazing into her eyes to comfort her. I don't have time to explain now. He added. Glifar ran upstairs to pack his clothes and hurry his wife along. Bisper, hurry up, we must leave right now. Glifar yelled. I'm coming. Bisper yelled back. Go put your things in the car, I'm right behind you. Glifar said. The entire family was safely in the car when they began to hear sirens. Glifar started the car and speed out of his driveway. He used all the back roads to avoid the cops. Every once in a while, Glifar would look over at his wife, who looked frightened. He placed his hand on her knee to reassure her that things were going to be okay. But Glifar wasn't so sure. Glifar and his brother Arfadar had murdered six rogue Stravarian cops who killed Arfadar's wife and child. The cops had also framed Arfadar for killing King Hansor of Strev, under the orders of Ozasakor, the Secretary of Defense and the King's right hand. They killed the king to put Ozasakor in power. Ozasakor planned to blame the king's murder on the Elden Lonians of Grzizia to start a war between the two countries. The Elden Lonians were a race of humanoid aliens with red eyes and telekinetic abilities. They also hate to lose as much as they hated the Stravarians. But Arfadar figured out his plan and was about to tell the royal council when Ozasakor has his family kidnapped. Ozasakor promised to let his family go if he kept quiet, but when Arfadar returned home with his brother Glifar, six cops had killed his family and were waiting to kill him as well. Glifar and Arfadar were very skilled fighters, and they killed the cops with ease. But they knew when the cops didn't report back to Ozasakor, they would be in trouble. They had basically just laid out a red carpet for Ozasakor to blame them for everything. They had no other choice but to flee planet Auswian for planet Earth. Ozasakor was a strub-born Eldenlonian who was beat by his father and abandoned by his mother. He vowed to kill all Eldenlands the day he murdered his father at age 14. He spent his childhood in jail until he was of legal age, 18. King Hanzor had ruled at self-defense and gave him a job in the castle as his assistant when he got out of jail. When Ozasakor turned 21, he joined the military and quickly moved up the ranks until became the Secretary of Defense. When King Hanzor signed a peace treaty with the Eldenlands, Ozasakor was furious. The peace treaty is what led him to kill a man who had been like his father for many years. Ozasakor couldn't let go of his hate for the Eldenlonians. With the military and the Stravarian Police Department on their trail, Glifar drove into a field where he hid his ship the Odyssey. Okay, quickly, everyone get on the ship. Glifar said. Everyone grabbed their things and ran onto the ship. Glifar sat in the captain's seat while his brother got in the co-captain's seat. Glifar began to start up the ship and prepare for liftoff as his wife and daughter buckled up. Hersuf began crying again. Daddy, where are we going? she asked. Planet Earth. He replied. The Stravarians were a race of humanoid aliens, who are known throughout the galaxy for their spicy cuisine and piercing green eyes that glow in the dark. So Glifar knew that they would easily fit in with disguises. Get ready for lift. Arfadar said as the ship's jets came on and lifted off of the ground. Ready the jets for super speed. Glifar said. Ready. 
Arfadar replied. Gleefar pressed a green button under a glass case and the Odyssey speed through the sky into outer space. Just as they thought they had lost Ozasakor's men, a ship appeared out of nowhere. The ship began firing at them. We're hit. Arfadar yelled. But I think we can make it. He said. Arm the missiles. He yelled. Armed. Gleefar replied. Fire. Arfadar yelled. They hit the enemy ship and it exploded on impact. Gleefar let out a sigh of relief. We just lost two engines on the left side. Arfadar screamed. We are going down, he yelled. Everyone get ready for a crash landing. Gleefar yelled. The Odyssey broke through Earth's atmosphere and caught fire as it fell into a body of water. One thousand years later. I'm so excited. April said. I can't believe we are finally going to see inside the ship. She said talking to the divers on the radio. What do you see down there, she asked. There are people down here. Matthew answered back. I think they are still alive, he said excited. How is that possible? April asked. You won't believe this, but they are in cryostasis. He answered, 